My name's Tracy Guns, and um, here I am at Tape Town Studios. Um, and the reason I'm here is to show off the new Baum guitars that are, I guess we call them import guitars. Very high quality, cool, sexy guitars um, from a company right here in, in Aarhus. So, you know, they have a lot of pride, Danish pride, and I'm proud to be here to do this. Okay, so when I'm attracted to a guitar, it's generally because I'm such a glam guy, you know, like I'm, I love the imagery of the New York Dolls and, and early Motley Crue and even early Led Zeppelin, I guess, you know, they all kind of had this bigger than life image, you know, and guitars, um, it's very, it's not very often where something new comes around that instantly grabs my attention in a positive way. You know, if somebody makes a funny shaped guitar, I'm like, it's ridiculous, you know. Um, but something like, especially like this uh, back wing, you know, this kind of screams LA gun sleazy rock music. You know, it just, I don't know why, but it does. You know, it's, it's black with chrome and you know, this like really sexy, angles of like, like the angles of a woman's body um, are things that that really attract me to a guitar you know is you know I don't want square guitars or you know things like that things without headstocks you know all that stuff I've never been attracted to that um, so in another way a guitar could be described an electric guitar and rock band could be described as an audio weapon you know what I mean so um, you know, flying V's look really cool for that reason to me, you know, like even, they're really a blues guitar, essentially, because blues artists use those first. But they're such great metal guitars, you know, um, and that's the thing, you know, with Baum guitars, you know, these shapes are so classic, you know, it's like, it's like I'd seen all these guitars from the 50s or something, you know what I mean? And that's the first thing I'm ever attracted to, is something that looks vintage, something that has a vintage quality, something that has this kind of timeless thing about it because, you know, you, when you're creating music, you hope to create things that are timeless. And my belief is the more timeless things you surround yourself with or use in the process of writing and recording and living your life, then the more authentic and timeless, you know, the, the final product should be. Um, it's not always the case, but we try, <laughs> you know, we definitely try to, to, to keep things like that. So, um, you know, I can walk into a huge guitar shop with, you know, 200 guitars in it and there will always be one guitar that gets my attention always, you know, just one, you know, it's like, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Oh, what's that? And then as soon as it grabs my attention, everything else goes away. It's like, okay, I know that guitar is cool, you know? And I'll always pull that one down, plug it in. And even if it's set up funky, you know, my brain on, you know, instantly says, oh, but you can set that guitar up any way you want. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, you know, it's always a balance of something that's stunning, but also subtle. So it has to be, just right you know what i mean it has to be just right like you know most of my les pauls for example um my my newest one which is this pelham blue aged pelham blue les paul custom it's so beautiful you know i mean it's just a les paul custom but the paint is just right and it's so unique on its own and then it's the same with my 59 reissues they're all unique you know and um you know the, the these this is certainly unique too you know, but in a different way. And um, for the many different styles I attempt to play, look, visually looking at a guitar and knowing that like, hey, on this, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to write something like David Bowie. You know what I mean? Like, like I can have that, that inward conversation with myself or like, yeah, this is Bowie, man. Today, this is Bowie. Um, where when I put my Les Paul on, you know, it's always like, this is Randy, this is Jimmy Page, you know, you know, this is Joe Walsh, you know what I mean? And 
Um, so I have to have other guitars that inspire different frame of mind. Um, and for me as a guitar player, you know, guitars are just as influential as guitar players, you know, to really trick your mind to move somewhere else for sure. If I had to name three guitarists that have been the most influential to me, um, that's pretty clear to me. Um, and they're very different. And, and obviously the first one is Jimmy Page. And Jimmy Page covers so much ground, you know. Um, when he was in his time in the Yardbirds to start with was such a growing experience for him as a guitarist, being with Jeff Beck in, in particular, because Jeff was a little bit more advanced than, than Paige at the time. Paige had more studio experience, so that was a good blend. There's a song called Psycho Daisies by the Yard Yardbirds, which Paige plays guitar on and Jeff Beck sings. It's a B-side. And like, that song is just as exciting to me as Whole Lot of Love, you know, and it's like, it's early Yardbirds, you know, and, and it's because Paige's nasty tone you know, it's like, like, man, this guy's nasty. So, you know, obviously I got into Zeppelin at Zeppelin II and uh, that heavy blues influence with the Echoplex on the Lemon Song, Theremin, you know, noise. And then, you know, I was done listening to that. Obviously I got Zeppelin I, got to hear Dazed and Confused, How Many More Times, Communication Breakdown, the styles, the, the, the diversity in hard rock styles. It's not like so much like the Beatles where they were diverse in music styles, you know, like a polka, a waltz, something experimental, you know, a, a, you know, a song in a major key that's happy, you know, like they were great at that. But Zeppelin was great at, you know, that chemistry of those three guys. Obviously Robert Plant is the greatest, but John Bonham, John Paul Jones and Jimmy Page together, playing together, no matter what style they were doing, it sounded different. It sounded like, wow. So whatever that voodoo is, <laughs> I just call it Jimmy Page, you know? And it's like, and that's what I'm still obsessed with. And um, I didn't know that you could switch between minor and major scales for the first 25 years I played guitar. And that defines Jimmy Page, right? So, <clears throat> um, but, but I glowed about him enough. So the next really important one, um, even more so than Eddie Van Halen, which would surprise a lot of people because I love Eddie Van Halen, uh, was Randy Rhodes, you know. And the thing that was really cool about Randy, uh, number one, when I was in 10th grade, Slash had seen Randy Rhodes one night with Ozzy at the Forum in L.A. And I didn't know who Randy Rhodes was. I didn't even know Ozzy had a solo band. You know, I was still, I had no idea. I was 14, I guess. And Slash finds me before the first class starts that day. And he goes, he goes, I saw what's going to be your favorite guitar player last night. And I'm like, whatever, dude. You know, we were like that kind of, those kind of kids, whatever. And he's like, no, this guy, Randy Rose, man. And, he, and I'll never forget, he goes, he played an Explorer, you know, which was like a popular guitar at the time. And Randy Rhodes didn't play an Explorer, but from wherever Slash was standing, probably the white V or something looked like an Explorer. He goes, he played an Explorer and he played like you. He played from here to here instead of from here to here. I'm like, really? Because like for some reason I adopted this, that style of playing, you know, when I was really young. And uh, he goes, yeah, he plays up and down the neck like you do, like that, man, you're gonna, you're gonna love this guy. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know. <clears throat> and uh, a couple days later, I was going to the beach with my dad and Crazy Train came on the radio. And I knew, I knew instantly before they said who it was, but I heard this new guitar sound, you know, and then the solo came in and my brain went, and I told my dad, I go, dad, that's Ozzy Osbourne, that guitarist's name is Randy Rhodes, and Saul told me about this. He wasn't Slash yet when we were kids. Slash told me about this guy. He said he's gonna be my favorite guitarist. And my dad's like, oh, okay, you know, should we get the record? And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, we should get the record. So uh, we went to the beach, went home, bought Blizzard of Oz album, put it on, and my life changed forever as a guitarist. You know, it was like, wow. Now it's not just Jimmy Page and then, you know, Aerosmith Live Bootleg, Peter Framman Comes Alive, 
Ted Nugent, Double Life, Gonzo, UFO, Strange, and I, you know, I loved all that stuff, but I loved Paige, and now I had an equal. Now I had Randy Rhodes, and that shaped my style, you know, because within the realm of Randy Rhodes and Jimmy Page, we had everything from Gary Moore to Tony Iommi to Burt Janch, you know, this kind of Celtic folk music, like. I could cover all the styles, especially blues, you know, because even Randy, as a fantastic, you know, classical style metal guitarist, there was so much blues in his playing, you know, and and so those were my really my two guys. But then I discovered Johnny Thunders and the New York Dolls, you know, who can't play like either of those guys, you know, um, and he didn't want to. He probably never even, besides whole lot of love and Stairway to Heaven, he probably didn't give a shit about Led Zeppelin, you know. Um, and he probably could care less about Ozzy Osbourne. So, but his image <clears throat> um, was so striking, and that music was so trashy and so noisy, and his style was very particular, you know, very Chuck Berry, kind of like, you know, a Keith Richards kind of guy, you know, and, and he had image changes and stuff that were all very cool and um so i really wanted to kind of adopt his persona you know what i mean kind of this you know i don't give a shit kind of attitude on stage you know and and kind of incorporate his sloppy style with these very articulate studio styles and experimenters and things like that and so like i would definitely say you know Johnny Thunders, Randy Rhodes, and Jimmy Page, that's what defines my vision. You know, like if I have a, a frame of reference, those are the three top guys, you know, that, that um, in my life that I was attracted to the, mo to the most. And the greatest compliment I ever got is my friend Casey Chaos from this band Amen. They were on tour with us, and he was talking to Arthur Kane, the bass player from the Dolls, um, one night while we were on tour. And Arthur Kane had told Casey to tell me that Johnny Thunders told him that I was his favorite guitarist. And I had played with Johnny. I, I didn't mention that earlier, but I, I had played one show with Johnny Thunders. I played his guitar. He sang. It was ugh, amazing. And later, you know, after he died, I found out that he had told Arthur Kane that I was his favorite guitar player. And so, like, that kind of that's that's the stuff that 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 makes me feel validated. You know, when I can la latch on to other musicians that I respect and then they respect me back and, you know, th those kinds of things. But, yep, Jimmy Page, Johnny Thunders, and Randy Rhodes. Those are my guys.